Rising majestically from one of the busiest cities on Earth, the Shanghai Tower is an iconic piece of Chinese architecture. With its twisting, sleek silhouette, this colossal masterpiece stands as a testament to human ingenuity and takes its rightful place as one of only four skyscrapers on Earth that is classified as mega tall. Today, we're going to cover everything there is to know about the tallest building in all of Asia, including the problems faced during construction, how it manages to meld cutting-edge technology with breathtaking design, and the debate about whether or not the entire project is actually worth it at all. Now, Shanghai is one of the largest cities in the entire world, boasting an estimated population in excess of 25 million people. Near the center of this enormous city lies the Luzhou Financial District, right on the edge of the Hangpu River. For much of its modern history, this area was a relatively undeveloped region. But beginning in the 1980s, the government designated the district as a special investment zone, and development was rapid. By the 1990s, city planners had settled on the idea that this area would feature three noteworthy skyscrapers to create a unique skyline that would attract tourists and businesses. Two of these skyscrapers were finished by the early 2000s, that being the Shanghai World Financial Center and the Jingmao Tower. These buildings were impressive buildings on their own, but the third and final skyscraper, the Shanghai Tower, would steal the show. In 2006, the Shanghai Municipal Government began an international bid for whichever company wanted to head up the project, and right off the bat, it was clear that the bidders had their work cut out for them. The designers wanted the tower to be the tallest building in Asia, shooting for taller than 600 meters. Its style needed to match the feel of its neighboring buildings, but at the same time, it also needed to stand out from them. Aesthetics aside, uh, there were dozens of technical issues to solve, like the foundation, wind resistance, and economic feasibility. Of the 19 tower proposals, the winning design was from the American architectural firm Gensler, and after a couple of years planning and preparing, construction began in November of 2008. The first hurdle faced by the team was the soft soil underneath Shanghai. An ordinary foundation wouldn't suffice here for a tower that would eventually weigh more than 850,000 tons, as it would be incredibly unstable and especially prone to seismic activity. Fears of the soil problem intensified just a few months into construction when a nearby apartment complex collapsed as its foundation failed to hold the building steady during an adjacent construction project. Apparently, digging crews had dug dirt out of one side and piled it up on the surface, creating a pressure difference that the foundation just simply couldn't handle. Fortunately, the apartments were empty when this happened, and so it didn't really make headlines around the world, but a failure in the Shanghai Tower absolutely Lee Wood. And with a building of this size, a collapse would just be nothing short of super catastrophic. Gao Gurong, a geotechnical expert overseeing the project, stated that if the proper steps weren't taken to secure the Shanghai Tower, the damages could be irreparable. It could cause a power failure or sinkholes, leading to the sinking of neighboring buildings. The consequences are unimaginable. There simply can be no mistakes. The solution to the foundation issue was threefold. First, the team distributed the weight of the tower across a much wider base of reinforced concrete to spread out the force that it exerts on the soil, and second, underneath the main foundation would be concrete pylons extending deep into the ground, providing significantly more strength to the overall structure. About a thousand of these pylons would ultimately be necessary. Finally, to make absolutely certain that the building would be stable, the engineers decided that five entire floors of the building would be underground. To accommodate these five levels along with the foundation, the first step of construction was to dig a massive pit, measuring 121 meters across and 33 meters deep. The concrete for the main portion of the massive foundation was then poured, and all within three days. And by 2010, everyone was prepared to begin construction on the main portion of the tower. The first step was to bring up the core of the skyscraper, made of reinforced concrete. This was done using what's called a slip forming process, meaning that all the machines and equipment needed to create a floor are housed within a giant steel platform weighing a thousand tons, which is then raised little by little, moving up after each floor is finished. It took six whole hours to raise this massive platform to the next level, but it was worth the wait for the safety and convenience that it provided. A special type of concrete called self-compacting concrete used for its high fluidity is pumped through a network of pipes up to the platform where workers then 
core it into place. Throughout the months, the crew worked at an average speed of one floor every five days, slowly raising themselves up into the clouds as the bones of the tower began to emerge into the Shanghai skyline. Soon enough, it had surpassed the towers next to it, and by June 2014, the building had reached its final height, and the crown structure was placed on the very top, followed by the glass facade down its sides, and then the interior design. Everything was finished, and the tower opened to the public in February of 2015. Now, the Shanghai Tower dominates its skyline, coming in at 632 meters tall, or about 2,073 feet. This makes it the tallest building in China, the second tallest building in the world. And not only is it known for its height, but also for its elegant spiral design and its glass twisting 120 degrees as it rises. This look was achieved by dividing the core into nine distinct sections, each slightly rotated from the previous, giving it its natural twisting appearance. Originally, the designers wanted this spiraling to be even more dramatic. Originally, envisioned as more of a whirlpool, but this was adapted into the current version due to structural concerns. While it does look impressive, the design isn't just for aesthetic reasons. A V-shaped indent, known as a strake, soars up the side of the tower, which, along with the overall shape, reduces the impact of winds by as much as 25% compared to a rectangular tower, which Gensler estimates saved them as much as $58 million in construction materials. Now, one of the most striking features of the tower is the glass facade that's double paned with considerable space between the inner and outer layers. This extra space between the glass panes provides two main benefits. First is environmental. Most skyscrapers use a single layer of glass, which is highly opaque and reflective in order to reduce heat absorption. But by having two layers, the Shanghai Tower takes away the need for either of them to be reflective, creating a heat buffer zone that simultaneously allows loads of natural light to pour into the offices while also reducing the power needed for air conditioning. In many of these buffer zones, or atria, hanging gardens have been created. This sustainability, along with others such as numerous built-in wind turbines and a system for catching and reusing rainwater has earned the Shanghai Tower Platinum Certification from the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEED, the tallest building to have ever received such an award. The second benefit from these glass panes is the creation of public spaces. In a glass atrium, not already taken up by green space, one can find restaurants, retail stores, cafes, walking paths, and much more, all accompanied by panoramic views of the city. And aside from these public spaces, there are many more things for visitors to see and experience. The first they'll encounter are the tower's many elevators which are the second fastest in the entire world. Built by Mitsubishi, these elevators can race from the second basement level to the 119th floor in just 53 seconds. And a fun side note, I've done it, and it's very quick. They reach a maximum speed of 74 kilometers per hour, 45 miles per hour, and after you're launched to the upper floors of the tower, you can step out onto the observation deck, which is tied for highest on the planet at 562 meters, or 1,843 feet. It's certainly an impressive structure. And according to one of the lead architects, it paves the way for redefining how tall buildings are used in big cities. The designers spoke of envisioning a future where all skyscrapers have these large public spaces and boost the life of the city instead of just being a dark corporate tower. Now all this sounds wonderful, but whether or not it's even been achieved in the Shanghai Tower is actually open for debate, and it all comes down to the immense cost of construction and maintenance. Now, the final cost for the Shanghai Tower was estimated at $2.4 billion. Quite a hefty price tag, but one that was expected to pay itself off through an influx of businesses to the new offices. However, this anticipated rush of corporations never really happened. In 2017, the tower management announced they were actually struggling to rent out the spaces because it had still failed to obtain all the necessary permits from the fire department. Because of this, prospective tenants stayed away, and even a large percentage of those that were actively paying for rooms had yet to move into them. Another problem was that although the spiraling glass facade certainly makes it look really cool, it had the unintentional effect of creating lots of floor space, especially oddly shaped edges and corners that were entirely unusable, making companies hesitant to pay for space that they couldn't even utilize. On top of this, the LEED Platinum certification is an architect's dream, but its increased efficiency also means higher cost for renters, pushing away even more customers. As of 2019, 55 floors were completely empty, a problem painfully obvious to the world at night when more than half of the tower was dark. This problem was only exacerbated by the worldwide shutdowns a year later. 2020 saw yet another problem for the building, which was widespread water leaks between the 9th and 60th floors, damaging carpets, desks, and a whole lot of electronics. This caused many on Chinese social media platforms to add the Shanghai Tower to the so-called tofu dreg construction projects, or simply tofu buildings. Tofu buildings are the slang term for construction of Chinese buildings of incredibly poor quality, often as a result of speedy work, lackluster materials, 
materials or money skimmed by corrupt officials. Management at the Shanghai Tower was quick to dispel these rumors and to point out that many viral videos of ceilings collapsing were actually from a shopping center across the country from 2016. But the water damage was real, and inspection teams had to be called in to investigate the source. And once that had been fixed, there was still untold damage across dozens of floors, as if they already didn't have an issue attracting tenants. And so, despite being one of the most impressive buildings of the 21st century, having pushed the limits of engineering and innovating several methods of construction, the Shanghai Tower is often considered by many to be a failure. Keep in mind that it was originally designed to signify the exploding success of the Chinese economy, but with its many empty offices and its many dark floors, perhaps it has become an ironic symbol of economic shortfalls. As one analyst put it, no company on earth could afford to fund such a project and never make their money back. Only large governments have the spare cash for that, and it doesn't seem that China will be making a significant return on their investment anytime soon. But the story's not over for the twisting skyscraper, so in the coming years if prices change or if new incentives attract more companies, the Shanghai Tower could transform into a new financial hub for China and East Asia as a whole, but only time will tell.